where we can find these um, playbooks that we've been going through. And it's all in command. So when you log into command, you're going to see um, how you can get into what's called KW Connect. Um, KW Connect is kind of like our learning platform through Keller Williams International. So um, if you come into KW Connect, you can then search for um, any of those playbooks that we've been going over, um, or you can just search for all of the playbooks if you want to. But today we're gonna do the seventh level um, open house playbook. So I'm gonna search for open house. And you'll see there's a whole bunch of training here about open houses. Um, we might actually go through a couple of these, but I know. This is the one I really wanted to go through was the host a seventh level open house. So what is a seventh level open house? Well, you know, you're, it's, it's like a grading system, right? So a level one open house is like you showed up, woo, right? Um, level two open houses, you probably put a couple of signs out in the yard um, and around the neighborhood. A level three open house is you also maybe ran a Facebook ad with it, um, et cetera, et cetera. So to really get all the way up to the seventh level open house so that you're um, running them in such a way that you're capturing good leads um, is where we want everybody to be when they're holding an open house. And some of the stuff that we're going to talk about is going to make sense. And some of it might be a little bit of a push for you to get to that level. So, um, and that's okay, right? We're going to work up to it. So um, here's the seventh level open house playbook. And we're just going to kind of go through this step by step. So the first thing is about picking the right open house. Okay. Um, you obviously want to try to get into that house and be one of the first agents to hold an open in it. Um, you want to try to get in the first week that it's live. We are starting to see a little bit of a, a shift in the market, um, whether it's temporary or long term or it's seasonality or whatnot, whatever's causing it. We are seeing some houses stay on the market a little bit longer. Um, so you should be able to get an open house that first weekend and or maybe if it's already been on the market for a week, you can hold it the second week. Um, either way, try to find a newer house to hold open. Um, if you aren't familiar, you can go into MLS um, and under the main menu, there's a button that says office listings, and then you can see all the new listings in your office by other agents. Um, and then you can find houses to hold open that way as well. Um, the second part about picking the right house is make sure it has a really good curb appeal in an area that's easy to add signage. So use the map feature, right? Look the house up on a map and just see how many entrances into the neighborhood are there going to be? Um, is it really so far deep down a winding road that nobody's gonna drive that far or they're gonna feel lost when they start on their journey? Um, or is it somewhere where there's a lot of traffic and it's gonna be hard to park for people to attend your open house, right? Um, make sure that you're you're picking a really good location that's easily accessible for people and also easy to find with your signage, okay? And then you want to pick a house that's kind of in the middle of the hustle and bustle, right? So is it near schools or shopping centers and rec areas? Um, you really want to try to find a house that um, is going to have maybe some walking traffic if it's a great time of the year um, or, you know, it, hold the open house when school lets out if it's near a school. Why not, right? So, so think about how you can get creative with holding your open house based upon where that house is located. Really think about what's the best time of day to hold this open. If it is on a busier road, hold it during rush hour traffic. Like that would be a great time of day to hold open house, right? The twilight opens in the week because people are driving home. They see the sign, they swing through. Does that make sense? So picking the right open house is really the first step and having an open house um, that's really successful for you and driving those leads. The second step to holding a seventh level open house is to pre-market this open house. So we've talked about door knocking on either side and I'm gonna ask, are you door knocking enough, right? So some people are like, oh, just go knock 10 doors. That should be enough. 
10 doors is just to say like, hey, there's going to be people parked outside your house. Don't be alarmed. That's not lead generating though, right? So this challenges you to do 50 for 25 on either side and 50 across the street. So actually a hundred houses, door knocking 100 houses for every open house that you have. And if nobody's home, you're going to leave something behind like a door hanger. Okay. So, hey, there's an open house taking place. It's this day and this time. I love for you to swing by and, and so I can get your, you know, the neighbor's opinions on this price point. Um, if you know of anybody looking into move to this area, please share this information with them. I would love to welcome the, them to the open house as well. Um, and, you know, just so you also are aware, there might be a lot of traffic out on the street and people parking. So um, just be aware of that, right? This isn't, hey, I'm holding an open house. Do you want to sell yours? This is like, hey, I'm holding an open house. And who do you know that's going to want to live in this neighborhood? Please invite them. And here's the thing. Most people that come to open houses are nosy neighbors, right? Like you probably have all experienced that with open houses. You get a lot of nosy neighbors. Nosy neighbors are neighbors that are maybe thinking about making a move themselves. And they want to know why this house is priced the way it is without having to ask for it or feel like they're getting pressured to sell their house, right? So you want listings in this market, you need to go door knock your open houses. If we want to drive the inventory in this market and we want to get listings, we have to go door knock our open houses and 10 houses is not enough. You need to go do 100. Okay. Um, if you can get phone numbers and you've scrubbed them against like the do not call list, then you can also call them. Um, I would stick to maybe just door knocking and leaving something behind. And then um, door knock any expired or FISBOs for sale by owner seeking approval to bring buyers by that may come from the open house. So that's another kind of um, sentence you can add on when you're door knocking. Um, if I find a buyer who um, really likes this neighborhood from my open house, would you be interested in, you know, maybe having them come and take a look at your house? Like, would there be any interest in uh, potentially selling your house if I found a buyer from this open house that wants to move into the neighborhood? Okay. Uh, if you do find any expired listings, so that's that's something to do is to look on the MLS in that neighborhood, see if there's any expireds. I think it'd be a really great point to go talk to that expired listing, um, knock on their door and just say, hey, I'm holding an open house on a new listing. If I find a buyer, would you still be interested in selling, right? And try to get your foot into that listing that way. Then what a lot of agents do as well is they do a, um, a, a preview to the open house where they'll invite those neighbors um, just to come and see it before the general public, okay? So that's the neighbor preview hour. Um, a lot of times agents just tack this on as the first hour of their open house. So they might market an MLS that the open house is from you know 12 to 1.30, but when they're door knocking, they're inviting them to show up starting at 11. So you're actually there from 11 to 1.30. And 11 to 12 is the neighbor preview, and then 12 to 1.30 is the general public. Um, that's kind of an incentive for the neighbors to get there before a whole lot of the general public does. Um, so they don't feel like they're walking into a crowd on their own street. Um, and then you can have some deeper conversations with them if they show up to that as well. And it makes them feel a little exclusive, right? You're, you're driving that, um, exclusivity with them. So the third step in having an open or seventh level, level open house, uh, is what you do during the open house, okay? You have to show up early and you have to be prepared to stay late. So I know a couple of agents have asked me like, well, if my open house ends at 1.30 at this one, can I host one at two o'clock over here? And the answer is absolutely not. Um, I can't remember an open house in my history where somebody didn't walk in two minutes before I locked the door, right? And then they wanna be there for 20 minutes. So um, whatever time you block off, be prepared a half hour on each way to still be at that property. Um, you want to show up early. You don't want to feel like you're rushing around. Um, people will show up five minutes early anyways, and you want to be prepared for them. Um, you don't want to have to force anybody to wait for your open house to start. Um, you know, you got to make sure all the lights are on, all the doors are, you know, open, that nothing's locked, that shouldn't be locked. 
um, that the AC air is on. It's not super stale in there. Crack some windows if you need to. Um, set yourself up and all your materials so it's really presentable. Um, you know, make sure you have your like basket of booties. There's a lot of things that come with making a presentable house when you're holding an open house and um, you have to give yourself time to do it. What I always have done is I go and prep the house first, lock it up again, then go out to my car, put out all the signs so that when I drive back to the house, um, I unlock it and I'm ready to go. Because as soon as people see those signs, they're going to start turning towards the house. So um, one, if you're going to go put out the signs, the house needs to be locked. And two, I always do it last um, so that I'm prepared for anybody that comes right away. Okay. Um, have two or three agents with you that can manage the crowd. So this is going to be your call. Um, I think that having a buddy system is always a great idea. Um, Realtor Safety 101 is to bring a buddy with you. If you are going to have another agent at your open house, or you guys are going to share open houses, um, just think, just talk ahead of time about how you're going to split the leads and the names that are coming to the open house. Um, whether you guys are going to go in at it together or you're going to be the point person for the open house on Saturday and then your partner will be the point person for the open house on Sunday or every other person that walks in the door you get, whatever it is, just talk about it and put it in writing ahead of time so that you're both on the same page, okay? But um, having a buddy system is always a really good idea as well. You can, as an agent, bring somebody with you who's not a realtor, Okay. Um, so you can bring a spouse or a friend or a buddy. And um, the thing is, is that they cannot represent themselves as an agent in any way, shape or form. So they're there to basically make sure that like the water is stocked, that, you know, the booties are stocked, that your signs aren't blowing over in the wind, um, things like that. They're not really to engage with anybody that walks in the door. So um, you can have a safety system, just know that's not going to help you as far as like your business goes. Um, but if you wanted to bring a buddy that way, you can do that as well. Okay. Um, the next point on here is to have several properties that you can show unrepresented buyers. So, um, when you do, when you find the property that you're going to hold open, also look in that immediate area to see if there's other listings that are for sale without accepted offers. And then print off those MLS sheets or some you know, report from RPR or whatever you want to make it look pretty. Some sort of flyer on those properties. Um, because if, if somebody comes in and they're a serious buyer and they don't have an agent, you know, they're gonna be like, well, I don't know if this is really the one, I don't really like this, this, this. You wanna be able to say, well, there's these other three houses that are close would you be interested in taking a look at any of these? We could probably go later today or we can go tomorrow or, you know, like try to have information ready so that as soon as they get the, I don't know if this is the right one vibe, that means they're actually are looking at the house like they would want to move, right? That, that they're, they have some sort of intention of buying a property make sure that you have properties on hand to show them, okay? Even if it's 10 minutes away or, you know, a different city, it doesn't matter. A similar house, a similar price point, somewhere close by, and just see if they want to see those. And if they're like, no, I don't really want to live X, Y, and Z, then you can get more detailed conversation about, hey, you know, what are you looking for? Can we sit down and talk about it? Get into your buyer agency consultation, et cetera, et cetera, okay? And then the last point on here about hosting the open house is to make sure you're collecting information. So um, how are you going to collect information from people that walk into the open house? Um, everybody kind of does it a different way. Um, you know, some people just have like a paper, people write down their names and phone numbers and emails, um, but you need some sort of follow-up system. You, you have to have a way to connect with them after the open house is finished. So get an email, get a phone number. If you can get a home address, that's even better. Um, you know, some people might not want to give you that though. So you're going to push and pull. Um, 
You can, on your new agent sites, create an open house landing page that forces them to sign in on that to get information about the property. Um, I will show you that all real quick. So this is if you've upgraded your website to the new agent sites, which um, we have done a few trainings in the past, and we will um, have some more on the schedule as well if you haven't done this yet. There's also a video on the YouTube channel that walks you through how to upgrade your site. But once you've found, um, once you've upgraded your site, you can go and search for the address of the property that you're going to show. I'm just going to choose um, one of these houses down here. Well, this one looks great. 1.3 million in Waukesha. Let's hold this house open, right? Um, so all you do is go into the property that you're hosting. And up top here on the URL, you just want to click to um, be able to type at the very end. And you're going to do slash open house and hit enter. OK, that's all you got to do. Find the house, hit slash open house, and then hit enter. Um, and in a second, it'll take us to a landing page that's specifically for this property. OK, so we can have this up on our laptop or an iPad, or we can have a QR code that comes to this URL right here that people scan when they walk in. Um, but then they will have to enter in their contact information. First name, last name, email and phone number. Check the box that allows us to put them on smart plans and email them and call them and then um, hit submit. This will automatically go into your database in command as a lead, and it'll be marked as an open house lead. And um, after they hit submit, then they'll be taken to another page where they can click on the property and then see all the property details like they were if they were to just look it up, okay? So this is a really great way to also capture information. Um, I kind of like the idea of using this URL to point to a QR code and having that printed. Um, hey, would you mind signing in? You can just scan this QR code, blah, blah, blah. I would still also have some sort of paper method for those that are not comfortable in using QR codes or being able to scan QR codes. So um, have a paper backup as well. Don't rely on technology when you're out there in the wild, right? All right, so here's kind of the biggest thing about a seventh level open house. It's what you do after. Okay, so you've done the work. You you chose the right, you chose a really great house. You door knocked the area. Um, one thing that's not on here is running Facebook ads. I would totally run some Facebook ads as well. That just helps drive engagement and traffic to the area. Um, you know, you've captured the information of the people as they walked in. You've created a really warm environment. Now the open house is over, what do you do? Well, if you're using that um, sign in through your website, all those attendees are automatically going to be entered into command and marked as an open house lead. You can then start to add tags to them, put them on smart plans, things like that. Um, write a thank you note to all of them. Now, so hopefully the, the, the electronic landing page doesn't capture their home address. You would have to do that on a paper. So if you want to capture home addresses, um, after you do that, I would make sure you send them a handwritten note just saying, hey, thank you so much for swinging by my open house. I hope you enjoyed it. If you had any questions about the property or other properties in the area, you know, let me know. I'll be glad to meet with you. Once that house sells, we want to go door knocking again to the same houses we did to invite them to the open house. We want to go knock on all those doors with a just sold or pending flyer or door hanger hey, you saw me holding this open house and now that house has an accepted offer, I could do the same for you, right? Hey, my open house drove a bunch of traffic and only, you know, I, there was 40 people, but only one actually was able to buy the house. I have 39 other potential buyers. Are you interested in having them come look at your property? Right. Um, so one of the ways to send out that communication is what we call golden letters. OK, and um, on the pivot shift ahead Facebook page that's ran by James Shaw, 
Um, there's a lot of examples of these golden letters that you can, um, you know, use to send something out after an open house. And this is going to all the homeowners in that neighborhood. Now you door knocked a hundred houses. I would honestly try to send out like two to 300 of these golden letters afterwards. Um, whatever is appropriate for the neighborhood size, but um, you know, a one in 100 conversion rate versus getting a one in 200 conversion, you know, like you're sending out 200 letters, more likely somebody's going to answer than just a hundred. So anytime you go to do something that's lead generation based or marketing based, I want you to ask yourself, am I doing this in enough of a quantity to drive the business I'm looking for? And if you say, I'm not sure or no, you better, you better up your game, right? If you sit down, you go, I don't think a hundred letters is going to be enough for me to get a listing. Well, then you better make it 200. Does that make sense? Every time you do something that's marketing based, I need you to ask yourself, am I doing this enough? So even just holding open houses, if you're only holding one a weekend, I want you to ask yourself, is one open house a weekend enough for me to have the business that I want? Is it enough for me to have the career that I want in real estate? And if your answer is no, you got to go find more open houses each weekend. Okay. So here at the bottom of the playbook, there's a golden letter example, but basically, you know, I hold held an open house. There's 30 buyers out there that are interested in this neighborhood that weren't able to buy this house. Um, so we do know that there's a lot of demand for yours. Are you looking to sell? Give me a call, something like that. Okay. I would utilize that Facebook group to try to get um, some ideas on a golden letter. Okay. So this is just one example of one of the playbooks that's on Connect, the seventh level open house. Um, once again, if we just search open house on KW Connect, we're going to see a whole bunch of other open house playbooks as well. So if you really want to get better at holding open houses, um, dive into a lot of these. This one here has a lot of scripts and strategies, right? So what do you actually say to people when they walk in the door? Maybe come through here and take a look at what, you know, these scripts that are working for this person. Here's another open house system playbook. Okay. Um, let's take a look at this one. Pick the right house, prepare for your open house. So we talked about some of this, you know, flyers, sign in sheets, your business cards, pens, water bottles, whatever you want to bring, just make sure all that's prepared ahead of time. Get your signs out early. So this woman recommends at least 10 signs when she holds an open house. Um, a lot of agents blow up balloons and attach them to their signs. You got to ask yourself, is putting one sign on the corner of the neighborhood enough to drive enough traffic to my open house that I can capture leads? And if the answer is no, then put two out at every entrance to the neighborhood. Put two out with a handful of balloons attached to them. Okay. Um, this one is saying put them out the day before and then put the time and the address on the open house signs. That's a little complicated. Um, I would still, you know, maybe you could probably just keep it to putting them out as you do the open house, but I would then make sure that you have um, a long enough window time frame that people driving by can go home, pick up their spouse and come back. So you might want to think about a two hour open house or maybe even a three hour open house. Um, invite your database to the open house, right? How many of you do that? How many of you go into command and put together a smart plan email and invite your database to your open house? I bet you don't. <laughs> the people in your database might be looking for a house in that area. Share it with them. If they're not, they'll just ignore it. They'll move on with their lives. But if somebody is interested in seeing this house in Brookfield and you just said you're holding an open house and they know you, they're going to call you. They might not come to the open house, but I'm sure they'll call you, right? So don't be afraid to lead gen with your database using your open houses. It's just another touch for them. And then um, follow up with all the attendees, right? So again, it's that post open house follow up that's really important. Um, we there's some follow up plans, smart plans that are called eight by eights. It's eight touches over eight days. That's what an eight by eight is, um, or eight touches over eight weeks. Kind of depends on who sets it up. Um, but there has to be some value in your touches, right? Give them those MLS stats. Um, give them maybe other neighborhoods that. Bi-weekly neighborhood nurture, 
and and you can set up the neighborhoods around your open house, right? It doesn't have to be neighborhoods around the home they own. It could be neighborhoods around where they're interested in moving to. Um, you know, information about you, share who you are, because these people walked in the open house, they don't know you. Let them get to know you. Share your social media pages. So they can go and, and follow you, right? What are you doing to follow up with the people that come into the open houses in such a way that they want to start using you as their realtor? So who's who's holding open houses? Um, who's getting leads from open houses? Anybody yet? Okay, well, I highly suggest you get out there. Uh, don't be afraid of them. Start using open houses as a way to lead generate, get in front of people. Um, you know, you're, this, is, this is your job um, is to have conversations. If you've ever taken bold or ever sat in the bold room, um, you know that to have a successful business, and this is also in the MREA, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent, you need to have 100 real estate conversations a week. And I had an agent yesterday um, asking me how, how that can even be done if they don't have you know thousands of people in their database. Well, you got to go hold open houses. You got to go meet people. So... Um, you know, if it's if it's four open houses a weekend to get to that number, then that's what you need to go do. Okay. But you can't just keep meeting people and then not have a system as to how to communicate with them afterwards. You can't just go out there and not have a system on how to drive leads to your open house. Right. So really think about if you were a buyer, what would make you show up to an open house? And go and do that and go and do that a lot. <laughs> okay. Quantity. Okay. All right. Um, that's about all I had. Any questions, guys? Can you hear me? I'm in my car. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Do you have a question? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm super, super new. Um, the only open I've ever been in is when I was looking to sell, like, or uh, buy a house a couple years ago. Um, do you have any advice for, like, super, super brand new, no idea, like, what I'm doing kind of point? Yeah. Um, I think you great info today, uh, and, like, this is very, very useful, but... Uh, like I know somebody said there's a Facebook group where you can find like people who need somebody to do an open house for them, but not really quite to that stage. Like I would love to like tag along with somebody if if they would like help or something like that. Yeah. Um, which office are you in? Uh, North Shore. Okay. Yeah, so I would start um, with making sure you're going to Productivity Coaching with Janine on Thursdays and Tuesdays with Amanda, and I would connect with a lot of the agents that are there because they, I, I know that there's a lot of agents that attend those classes that do open houses. Um, so I would, you know, just, you're going to have to kind of meet agents and get connected with them so that you can start shadowing them so that you can start learning what they're doing with open houses at a high level. Um, and then just, I always just observe and pick out the pieces that I would feel comfortable doing and then like double down on that. Right. So if, if you, if you see how they address somebody when they walk in the door and you're like, well, I would maybe do this, that's fine. Then you go and do that during your open house. Um, so I would, I would encourage you to just start meeting all the agents in the offices through your training and your classes, um, because they are doing open houses. I know a lot of agents that are doing open houses. You can also post on our internal Facebook page, like, hey, I'm super new and I would love to shadow somebody who just kills it at open houses. Um, does anybody have one this weekend? I can tag along. And you'll usually probably get like two or three responses from that. So um, 
I would I would throw it out there to the to the group and see who you can go shadow. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Any other questions for me? Okay, well then, um, have a great day, everybody. Um, and we'll see you guys.